All right, folks. So many hams struggle with putting an antenna for HF communications into a small space, such as a backyard or a side yard. In this video, we're going to take a look at an antenna build I did. It's called the Shorty 40, and it's a shortened 40 meter N fed half wave antenna. Before we get started, I did want to say that down here, you'll see some buttons, a like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Shorty 40. In this diagram, you'll see a depiction of a typical N-fed halfway for 40 meters on the top part of the diagram. You see a 49 to 1 unun, which is used as a transmatch for impedance. And then you see a radiating element of about 66 feet or 20 meters. And that's relatively small in and of itself. But a lot of times you want to be able to shorten this up. Now for the Shorty 40, as you can see in the lower part of the diagram, we still use the 49 to 1 unon or transmatch, and then we use 10.1 meters of wire. That wire will act as our element for 10 and 20 meter bands. Then we employ a induction coil, which is 34 microhenries, but it also chokes off the 20 meter and 10 meter bands. So they're not able to pass along the radiating element through that induction coil. So it's kind of like two antennas in one, and then we add another six feet, give or take, uh, about 1.85 meters. And that gives us a total antenna length of 40 feet, which is 26 feet shorter than the typical NFED half wave. This makes it a lot easier to put up in a certain types of situation, portable uh, for home use, something like that. Uh, requires a lot less space. And that, that's why this antenna is so handy. And I can still get on 10, 20, and 40 meters. Uh, I played around a little bit on 15 with some tuning, but I wasn't exactly happy with the performance. I'll have another video linked below that shows how I built the induction coil, in case you're interested. All right, folks, so I think we're in a spot where we can test the antenna. So I want to talk a little bit about its current state and some things that uh, I'm still going to need to do moving forward. So for this antenna build, I printed out this case, and I showed this on the channel before a while ago. Um, and this is a 49 to 1 unun that I built using a uh, T140-43 ferrite iron core. Um, here is a ferrite iron core that has not been wrapped. And then I wrapped it with this 16 gauge. Let me just get it out, get it out real quick. Sorry. Um, but this 16 gauge uh, magnet wire, this is the same company, but this is 18 gauge that we used on the induction coil. Um, I got about a pound of it. It was like 13 bucks or something like that on Amazon. Um, I, I do like this, this magnet wire. I use it, uh, this brand, I use it for a lot of my projects. But in here, you can see that I have two twisted primary turns, 14 turns total, and that gives me my ratio for 49 to 1. And then I also have a capacitor tying um, the, center con the center pin of a BNC connector to, to, the, uh, to the shield, the ground, and it comes out here. This is where I would mount a counterpoise. Now, when we test this antenna, we're going to test it without a counterpoise. And then we're going to test it with a 17-foot counterpoise to see if that makes any, any difference. And then this is the antenna side where we would connect our long side of our element, which is right here. Now, it says to cut this for 10.1 meters, and I cut it for 10.2. So that way I'll have some wiggle room to adjust. I imagine I'll have to cut this connector off and then apply another one. And that's okay. I do, I do that all the time when testing out antennas. This is the coil that, uh, that I made. Um, I've attached the two, two pieces of the element, um, and then we soldered the connections in. So this is pretty much permanent installation right now. Um, then I used these screws to mount the... Um, the, the wires on the spade connector, and then we just electrical taped it up. Uh, long term, I think I'm going to heat shrink this entire loading coil, and that will help. Now, some folks are saying, well, how come you didn't put a lot of strain relief leaf in here or maybe attach the wire? I don't think it's necessary. This is a pretty solid or pretty sturdy connection. But also, when I shrink wrap this, uh, I'll be using adhesive line shrink wrap, and that will help it up uh, too. What I don't want to do is, right now is get in a position where I need to make an adjustment somewhere, and I can't. So that's going to be a later phase of the, of the project. 
Now this is supposed to be 1.85 meters, this piece right here, the short end, um, and it is, but I cut it a little long. Here you see about 10 centimeters, um, which is folded back on itself. And the reason I did this is in the event that I need to adjust this one for the 40 meters, which I'm expecting because if you remember, we were at about 34.4 micro Henry's uh, on the loading coil. Um, so overall, that's the antenna. We're going to go outside, we're going to set it up, and then uh, I'm going to hook up the nano VNA, and then we're going to do some analysis on this antenna and make a determination if there's any further adjustments that need to be made. So here are the initial readings from the nano VNA. Um, it's cut off a little bit just north of 40, or maybe south of 40, depending upon your perspective. But what you can see on 40, 20, and 10 is the antenna is a little long, and I expected that. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and have to trim the antenna. The first pieces that I'm going to tune are going to be the 10 and 20 bands. And that's cutting the longer part of the element, not the shorter part. Because that coil chokes off 20 at that point in time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some adjustments and see what we can find out. The initial picture that I shared had a 17 foot counterpoise attached. I removed the counterpoise and 20 got a little bit closer and the SWR overall went down. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be using a counterpoise with this antenna in this particular installation. I generally will keep a 17 foot counterpoise in my bag with my other antennas in the event I need to put one on or test one out. I ended up having to cut the antenna about five times. I did a few cuts on the longer element and I was able to bring in 20 and 10. Now you can see the dip for 10 is to the left of the actual band, but my SWR is below 1.6. It's below 1.5 for most of the 10 meter band, and that's okay. I don't really use uh, 10 meters. Now for 20, I'm right around 1.4, and I think that that's going to be pretty good. It's going to work out well for me. And then I started to trim the short end of the antenna to bring a 40 into resonance. The red line here is where I ended up finally. Um, now the thing I want to say about 40 meters is, is that I have the end of the antenna folded over so it's easy to adjust either length or, or to shorten or lengthen the antenna from a 40 meter standpoint. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show where 40 is where I ended up but it's easy for me to just go ahead and pull a little extra wire out or put a little extra tighten up a little extra wire. And this is where we ended up on 40. I'm pretty happy with the results overall. Now you don't need to use a tuner with this particular antenna. With my 7300 I have the built-in tuner so I can tune this down to even lower SWR if necessary. Also with my ICOM uh, 705 where I most likely will be using this antenna I do have an external, external tuner there that I plan to use. Just a quick picture of the Unun. -un. I have the top loop tied to a fence post and then the right hand side is the antenna line itself. I'm feeding it with 100 feet of RG8X at the moment. I mounted the antenna in a sloper configuration using a Gigaparts fiberglass pole. I really like this pole, mast, whatever you want to call it. Here it's up about 32 feet in the air. Here's a close up of the coil. The other thing I wanted to talk about was at the end of the antenna, I have about two feet, two and a half feet of shock cord and I use this shock cord to give me some resistance uh, with the antenna so that way or strain relief that way if the mast sways in the wind that shock cord will extend and then retract and won't put stress on my antenna it's a pretty good idea I'm not exactly sure where I came up with it or how I got that idea but it works really well and I would encourage everybody to try it oh, but, uh, seems to be a pretty good combination and, uh, at least it's all in working order at the moment so I like that so uh, you're sounding good as well, uh, at least 20 over at this end, so uh, the band all of a sudden is very, very quiet, but you're, you're cutting right through there, Real. so uh, we will catch you next time, 73 from N6, ECI. I was able to send and receive on single sideband without issue. I also received clean audio reports, and that made me happy. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. KE8, Bravo Kilo Papa from Whiskey. Tango Zero Sierra. I didn't even look at the S meter, but there are no problem copying whatsoever. Uh, I'm assuming you must be close to the same. But if you want an S meter reading, I'll certainly give it to you there on the next go around. Uh, we're running an old, not an old, an ICOM 718, uh, driving an old SB200. Uh, 
about 600 watts up the antenna, which is an old Mosley clock. <laughs> I also spent some time operating FT8 on 20 meters, and as you can see, I got pretty good coverage. Now, this is over the course of a few different hours, so I don't want you to think that this was a five-minute exercise, but the antenna had pretty good range, and I was happy with it. I got really clean signal reports. I also played around on 40 a little bit, and you can see I was actually getting some contacts into Australia, which is pretty cool, as well as Europe. I was pretty happy with the antenna's performance overall. This is the part in the video where I thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it.